The world's finest embark on a new adventure that brings them together with Wonder Woman for the very first time to solve a murder mystery on Paradise Island. Do the Amazons have a killer in their midst, or is a rare murder not what it seems? Let's find out in our review of Batman Superman World's Finest number 30 from DC Comics. See you in 3. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Batman Superman World's Finest number 30. Love him or hate him, Mark Wade does it again with another first in his version of the world's finest canon. Wade sets up a murder mystery that's expertly constructed as a perfect excuse to get the world's finest on Themyscira and elevate the strength of each character, particularly Batman as the world's greatest detective. There are some pacing issues toward the end, more on that a little bit later, but this is a winning issue overall. Before we dig in, let's recap what happened in the previous issue. The Dark Knight and the Man of Steel in Batman Superman World's Finest number 29 successfully thwarted Doom Might from the Sixth Dimension and saved all reality with the help of Batmite and Mr. Mixelplek. The issue ended with Batman getting a good belly laugh and Batmite earning a special place of honor. That brings us to the current issue, which is Batman Superman World's Finest number 30. Batman and Robin and Superman respond to an invitation by Wonder Woman to come to Themyscira for a secret purpose. Despite Hippolyta's better judgment, she allows men to set foot on the island due to the grave nature of the problem. What's the issue? An Amazonian inventor named Diatrine was found murdered in a locked room. If you're a longtime reader of murder mysteries or detective novels from characters like Hercule Poirot or Sherlock Holmes, you'll recognize the scenario immediately as the locked room murder scenario. That means you have a body in a room that's locked and there's no possible way for anybody to get in or out that anybody can detect. This is the type of mystery that made Sherlock Holmes and other fictional detectives famous. Mark Wade lays out that scenario perfectly by directing or maybe possibly misdirecting readers right to the body with as little information as possible to make the puzzle seem as juicy as possible. After shoring up all the obvious questions like who else has access to the room and did Wonder Woman check everyone on the island with her lasso of truth, Batman sends Superman and Robin to visit Magala at the Well of Souls as a possible lead. Magala is bound to the well, so she couldn't have done the murder, but she may have heard or seen something that hasn't been checked. Mark Wade cleverly leaves Magala for our visiting heroes as an organic way to inform new readers about the purpose of the Well of Souls and its connection to the afterlife. Wade is possibly playing a long game by planting the seed that Themyscira will play a part in a larger adventure in the future, whether it's in World's Finest or someplace else. Or maybe it could simply be a way to bring new readers up to speed on Paradise Island. Either way, it works out. When our heroes, besides Batman and Wonder Woman who stayed behind, arrive at the well, they find Magala injured and rambling about a deceiver who came through the well the night before. Meanwhile, Batman and Wonder Woman continue to search the room where Diatrine's body was found with no success or clues to be found. The absence of clues leads Batman to the most Holmesian conclusion possible. Diatrine is not the murder victim she appears to be. The reveal behind Diatrine's death is too good of a twist to spoil here, but know that it makes perfect sense and leads to an action sequence that pits men against gods and immortals. The last third of the issue is a well done action sequence that involves multiple characters and that eventually leads to the recognition that Wonder Woman and Batman and Superman now respect each other as mutual peers, setting up the opportunity for that trinity to move forward in the future. So let's cover the overall positives and negatives about this issue, starting with the positives. Mark Wade's setup and execution of a locker room murder mystery is dead solid perfect. All the obvious questions are pre-answered or addressed in short order during the investigation to bring the readers along in the mystery. Splitting up Batman and Superman is a great way to make efficient use of the available page space for uncovering clues because sometimes those type of locker room mysteries can draw out because you got to cover a lot of area. And the action sequences that follow the big reveal show how the world's finest could easily evolve into the Holy Trinity without trouble in Wade's version of the DC Universe. So in effect, this is a one and done issue, but it accomplishes everything he tries to do in a very short space. And the general reading experience is pretty satisfying. So what's negative or the downside of Batman Superman World's Finest number 30? Once the antagonist, or antagonist, I'm not going to spoil it too much, are revealed, the story picks up a rapid pace that feels honestly a little bit rushed. We don't get much time to let the who, what, when, where, why, and how of the villain get fleshed out. The last third of the issue doesn't have as much time to breathe and gather weight. 
Admittedly, this is a minor quibble, as the whole purpose of this issue is to establish the Holy Trinity working together within the world's finest timeline for the first time. But you get the impression that this story would have served itself better or worked a lot better for the reading experience if it had been broken up into a two-parter. Let's switch gears and talk about the art. Gleb Melnikov does an excellent job of giving readers a gorgeous looking Themyscira, both in terms of the architecture and the population, plus the action is energetic and well choreographed. It's impossible not to compare Melnikov or any artist stepping into this title against Dan Moore, but in this case Melnikov holds his own with a fantastic looking comic. So taking a step back and let's look at the big picture. Where does this story sit in the grand scheme of the title and whatever timeline Mark Waid is setting up? As of this writing, there are no World's Finest issues solicited for November of 2024. That could mean World's Finest is going on hiatus to give room to the new absolute uh, imprint titles going out in the fall. Or the next arc, which is a two-parter and touts the formation of the World's Finest Justice League, is simply dovetailing into the main DC continuity. Either way, there's no news of World's Finest continuing past issue number 32. Final thoughts, what do we think about Batman Superman World's Finest number 30? It's another winning issue in a sea of DC mediocrity. I mean, there's a lot of DC junk on the shelves right now, and that's unfortunate. Mark Wade's interpretation of the first adventure of the Holy Trinity highlights the strengths of each character and serves as a great jumping on point for new readers who know nothing about Wonder Woman's home. Plus, Gleb Melnikov's artwork is stellar. The issue feels a bit rushed towards the end, particularly in the third act, but it's a solid pick overall. Therefore, Batman Superman World's Finest number 30 earns an 8.5 out of 10. If this title is truly ending or going on hiatus, it will be missed because World's Finest has been one of the consistently best books at DC since issue number one. But what do you think? Have you been reading World's Finest and agree it's one of the best DC titles around? Give us a thumbs up if you agree or leave a comment below with which DC title you think is better. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.